Now we'll go into the Q&A. So if you have time, stick around. I'll answer all the questions that you could possibly have, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. But that takes care of the segment for Just News. Now we go into Q&A. All right. And that will be right here. So there was some great comments I saw before we even started, a couple of them. This was this caught my attention. Jojo says, uh, sell everything. We are entering a depression. And I got to tell you, Jojo might not be wrong. And I know we just talked about a lot of great things right there. But, you know, the job of, of the Fed is to stop a depression. I think a recession, which I think a lot of people believe we're going we're gonna to go towards, is like the middle of the road, best case scenario. And I think that's where we're headed. Now, when we do that, we're going to get a lot of opportunities to buy all these things that uh, were super overpriced, let's be honest. But a depression, that's why it's so important that these supply chains get opened up because the demand is still high, but there's not enough for those to actually get to people and then actually produce. So then you're going to have a lot of problems with manufacturing. So the Fed can do only so much. They can raise those rates, which will probably help with, like we talked about, with the uh, housing market raise those rates, but it's not going to do much for supply chains and things like that. If things don't improve, and especially if we start to see uh, unemployment rise, uh, not too good. So do I think a depression depression? I don't know if, if they'll allow that. I think before we hit that, we're going to see some pretty big hikes by the Fed because they're like, let's pull all the stops. We don't want that to happen. And that's exactly what happened when Volcker was in power. I shouldn't say that. Well, it's kind of like that. When he was the Fed Reserve Chairman in the late 70s, early 80s, when you had inflation above, I think it was like almost 12%. And because of his aggressive rate hikes, he's one that they credit for staving off uh, the depression in the early 80s. Just a little history. All right. And then uh, Gas Fee Fee says, recession is a good time to eat less and lose some weight. <laughs> Sweat coin plug. And you're not wrong. That is, that is for sure. So, but don't worry, everybody. Like I said, uh, short-term pain is necessary for long-term gain. That's what it is. Rob, part of why did you grow? I didn't grow up in Iowa. Midwest. Uh, I think positive. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is from uh, Joby Anderson. I work in the U.S. manufacturing department, of defense-related, and we can't get parts. Terrible sign. Not a good sign. And uh, there's uh, some of your proof right there. Now, not to say that it's all bad, but we know the supply chains are, are a little bit stressed right now, we will say. And those have to open up, which is why I hate the fact that everything, all the manufacturing is done in China. I think it's a national security issue. And we talk, I've talked about this before, but this goes over. That goes from above. Coming recession. If you guys haven't checked out Echoes from Above, great channel. Macro does way better stuff than I do. Uh, uh, he says the upcoming recession is going to be rough. Hang in there, folks, and keep cash in emergency fund. That's right. Emergency fund. Save that fund. The rainy day is right behind us. Or right in front of us, I guess. <laughs> hey, Rob, are you happy with the deal you got at Celsius? Is it manageable in a bear market? So if we're talking about the loan that I took... Uh, no. And we talked about this. I already got liquidated on that one. So I talked about this in depth in a couple of weeks ago. So when I was over in Europe at uh, a guy's event, I had a loan. I took a loan out for the house in Puerto Rico, but a bunch of Ethereum. And uh, there was margin calls and I covered those margin calls. There's more margin calls, covered those and covered those. However, when I was in Europe, I was a little bit busy. And uh, that was a time when everything just went. I think that was around time Luna actually crashed. And uh, I was uh, out of service and uh, they liquidated me. So that's what happens. So the thing is, is you have to remember though, is that for Celsius or any kind of crypto loans, when you put it up, let's say you need, I don't know, let's say 10,000 bucks, right? Celsius is going to say, do you want $10,000? We'll give us $20,000 worth of whatever, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, whatever. And that's your collateral. And when the loan to value ratio goes down, let's say that you know Polygon goes from whatever it is and it goes in half, like you need it to re-collateralize. And if not, we'll liquidate you because we don't want to be under duress because we have a lot of people. 
If you don't collateralize, then they just liquidate you. Do they liquidate every single thing that you put in? No. They only liquidate the parts that will cover the initial cost of your loan. So in this case, if it's you put up 20000 of worth of Ethereum and you got $10,000 in cash, then the value goes to 15000 they will liquidate $10,000 worth of your Ethereum and they will give you back the $5,000 worth of your Ethereum. They didn't liquidate because that's yours. So there's a little bit of a price difference. I'll just tell you that. And then also be very well aware that borrowing money is not taxable. Borrowing money is, has nothing to do, you will, you will not get taxed on, on the money that you borrow, but you will get taxed on everything you got liquidated because they had to sell it. So just remember that. So looks like old Rob's gonna have another tax bill, even though he lives in Puerto Rico. That's just because I accumulated those Ethereum a lot, long time ago. And uh, that would actually lead me to my next point. There's, this, there's a term called buy, borrow, die. And uh, that's what the super rich do to get away from cap gains. They will buy an asset, they'll borrow against it, they'll put that in the trust, then they will just die and leave it off their family. Family inherits the trust, no taxes. I did a video on that, you should check it out. It might help you if you're super rich. <laughs> okay, ah, good, good stuff. What do you think of Kevin O'Leary as a crypto advocate? He's been very vocal as of late. He cares about the industry, not just his coins. Debatable. Um, Look, I'm not a big fan of the people who are out there in the public because they can turn you just like that. So to me, Kevin's a tourist so far. He's done a lot for the industry. I think he's going to do a lot more later on. Time will tell. But I like the fact that people know Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, and they say, hmm, I heard that Bitcoin was for the mafia, and it was for terrorism, and it was for money laundering. But Kevin O'Leary, he's on Shark Tank, and he's a wholesome gent. So maybe I should give crypto a chance. And that is the bigger news. And I think Kevin also is going on it's a pretty effective way as far as buying up exchanges in Canada and uh, positioning himself as uh, probably a leader in DeFi and crypto. So we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Ah. <sighs> Jacob, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so this is a good one. Jay says, hey, Rob, what are your thoughts on JP Morgan now becoming more of a Bitcoin advocate? So JP Morgan, uh, a couple of weeks ago, they came out and said that crypto was a pristine asset and they were swapping things around to get to unload some of their real estate positions to get more into crypto and digital assets. I found that very perplexing, uh, why, they would, why they would go that route. However, I mean, if you think about it in the long run, what's gonna happen with, with real estate? The prices of real estate are gonna go down pretty, pretty far. And the reason is, is because as the rates go up, there's gonna be a lot of supply because all, these, all the construction people I know are all working on new houses. The problem is, is that when you have the Fed raise the rates, then people are like, well, shoot, uh, it was just 2.65% for a mortgage, and now it's over five, and it's only going to go up to six, seven percent. I'm not doing that. I'll just rent until they go down. So what does that mean? That means that the real estate houses that are out there, they're going to sit on the market for quite some time. So if JP Morgan was into that, they're just losing money, essentially, because it just sits there and does, does nothing. And uh, it'll just sit, you'll have too much inventory, not, not enough demand. Now, that's them. If you want to play it a better way, not financial advice, but I will tell you this, there's a reason why we, you know, my wife did not buy a bunch of different uh, houses and things during like the big run up. And actually we sold two of our houses in Houston. Uh, the reason was because we'd be stupid not to, I mean, the prices were crazy. And uh, the other reason is that all we have to do is just wait, wait in the sidelines and just go, when are you going to crash? And I hate to say it like that, but it is the truth. And uh, that is exactly what happened in 2007, 8, 9. So I thought maybe it's pretty good play. Again, the, the, the other big question you got to ask yourself is, where are you going to hide your money? You know, I mean, 8.5% is a pretty high inflation rate. Although someone did say, make a good point. They go, look, 
I could rather, I have my, my cash in my bank account and yeah, it is 8.5%, but if I would have put it into Luna, I would have lost a hundred percent or on Ethereum, I would have gone down 20% in a week. So what's your talk point, talking points there? And I was like, that's not a bad point. So <laughs> it comes down to this. If you're looking for, for, for some short-term opportunities, it's pretty tough. Always look long-term and uh, things usually work out for the best, for the better, I would say. All right. Uh, Idle Lou says, prepare for a double dip before the wick up. Uh, we'll see. Maybe this is a bull trap. Uh, hey, Rob. This is a... Marco says, hey, Rob, I really think Ben, talking about Ben Cowan from Into the Cryptoverse, is right with his thoughts on market movement. He's super smart. Cat, that's for sure. Would you agree with Ben as well? Yeah. So Ben thinks, and he does great, got a great channel. He's actually, we do a show together, DCA every Friday. And as, he also has a really good website, app.intothecryptoverse. Links in the description, not an affiliate link. Ben doesn't pay me a dime. I just like to talk about it. And uh, a lot of the things that are there, which are great to look at, but there is one that I really important and it's called the risk assessment uh, chart. And what it shows you is as the price starts to go up, uh, the, the risk assessment goes a little bit to the right. So everything's between zero to one. And as we start to go down, you can see the risk assessment go, you know, of course, the lower it goes, the better off you are. But there's these time frames. And he, and he talks, and in, the, in the, the website, you can see like there's a point between zero and 0 0.1. It's only like a finite small amount of days. And we're getting towards that, that level. And when that level comes on, it doesn't last that long, but it's usually a great indicator for the bottom. So I think Ben's right on that one. Uh, I'm not sure if he's 100% right on like, because he says don't get into alts because alts are going to get slaughtered. And he could be right. That's why I do what's called micro DCA. Every other week I buy a specific uh, L1 crypto and go from there. And we'll see if it bottoms out. And if it doesn't work out, like, like this one where I'm stopping the DCA until Friday. If it doesn't work out, I take a 5%, 10% haircut because maybe it goes up and I just keep doing DCA. So we'll see. Ben's all the big thing is he thinks Bitcoin dominance is gonna go up. But right now I think it's like 56% dominance. Correct me, is it 56 or 46? I think it's 46%. Let's find out. Let's go to his website, huh? Show all the secrets. <laughs> I'll just do one thing. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Derivatives, social media, mining exchanges, valuation. Uh, can't show you the risk. Supply addresses, valuation. Damn it, where'd it go? Supply. I'll find it in a second. Ah. Other. Ah. Ah, here we go. 46%. Wish I could show it to you. Oh. Let me see. Uh, it's right here. Sweet Mary Joe's. Let me share my screen. I don't want to... Because there's some things Ben's like, don't show that part. That's only for paid customers. And the other ones, he's like, okay, you can share that stuff. So hopefully this isn't uh, one I can't show. So this is Ben's website. A lot of great information. Here's the dominance in red. I didn't know it went up that high in, uh, in January 2021. Almost 70, 69, 70%. And now here we are. 40, 41. Why is that important? Because you start to see that people will start to sell off their alts and go into Bitcoin, such as myself. And you got 46%, so that's just one of them. And he's got some pretty good stuff over here. Uh, volume of crypto options, exchange mining transactions, supply, moving average. This is a good one, return on investment, monthly returns. I always like to see this one, just to see where we're going. Because, uh, man, we're already, June's not a bad month. May was a junk month, negative 15, one of the few ones. I don't know. Just good to look at and some other stuff. Logarithmic regressions as such. All right. Let's see. 
Junk bond trader says there's so much more to crypto beyond Bitcoin. Don't tell the maxis that. They'll kill you. They'll kill you in the, in, the, in the chats. But you're right. There is more. And you know what's funny? There was a great interview with uh, Peter McCormick from What Bitcoin Did and Lynn Alden. And in that show, we talked about this a couple of days ago, even Peter McCormick, who is like super Bitcoin max, he was like, you know, he goes, uh, in different countries that I've, I've visited, there's these people that need stable coins and they use stable coins effectively. And it actually is a really great thing for them. Uh, but he says they're based on S coin protocol. You know, he, he's like, well, there's Ethereum and there's Tron and stuff like that. But these stable coins, he goes, so maybe stable, maybe he goes like, maybe these other coins aren't so bad. He goes, because if you're trying to do a store of value and you've got your, you make a hundred bucks a week and Bitcoin goes down by 10, 15%, that's not a store of value. He goes, stable coins really are good. And that was the first time I've actually heard anybody say anything positive as far as the Bitcoin max was. So that was interesting. <laughs> Robbie, you shouldn't give financial advice. I'm not giving financial advice. I tell you specifically, you, it's up to you to do what you ever want to do. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. And I say, don't forget, it's up to you to think about taking profits. And that's it. So Robert says, you shouldn't be giving financial advice one word, Luna. So if this is you talking to me about how I talked about how I dollar cost average into Luna, I didn't give you financial advice. Did I tell you to buy Luna? I told you what I was doing. And that was it. I really don't like when people put words in my mouth and say, well, you did this and you did this. I didn't, I'm not your dad. So if you don't like the information I'm, I'm giving out, go someplace else. There's, plen there's plenty of YouTube channels which are full of hopium, right? Me personally, yeah, I bought, I bought Luna. Yep, I dollar cost average. I also told that I was doing uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Luna, Cardano, and things like that. And I got, along the way, I've been saying the same thing. Have I not? Take profits. Nobody ever went broke taking profits. It's a funny thing that I say these things and then people uh, somehow forget about what's going on. Also, I will say this, that in uh, December and January when I was talking about taking profits, I got this weird look from everybody like, why are you doing that? Diamond hands forever, baby. You're a moron because it's going to the moon. Okay, you know what's funny? I don't hear a lot of diamond hand talking right now. Just saying. I just, look, I'm gonna let that go before my blood pressure goes to the roof. And that's it. All right. Why keeping alts is they are bleeding against Bitcoin and bear market? It's up to you. You don't have to. So the thing is, is, is the same thing happened in 2018 when everything started to go down and everything was bleeding against, against Bitcoin. The question was, why even hold on to alts? Why not just go everything and put yourself into Bitcoin? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Some people, they're like, they're not 100% sure that's actually going to happen. And other people are just like, sometimes they're just like me. Like, you know what? If I'm here for a three, five, 10 year outlook. I know right now it's not the greatest. And maybe if I was really gonna think about it, maybe I wouldn't even put it into Bitcoin. Because I mean, if you're, if you're thinking about, well, it bleeds against Bitcoin, so you put it into Bitcoin and then Bitcoin goes down. I mean, really think about this for a second. If you're not gonna think long-term, if Ethereum goes down 10% and Bitcoin goes down 3%, you're still down, right? So if you're thinking about it very long term, you could say to yourself, well, look, I'm going to go into stable coins and just kind of write it out there until we hit whatever I think is the bottom and then start to really reaccumulate. Here's a, here's a, here's a news flash. Uh, you will not hit the bottom. You will not time it perfectly <laughs> and you won't sell at the top. I've been trying for quite some time. It hasn't worked out for me. Some people will say, yeah, but this one guy did it. Mm -hmm. Ah. Metals man, is your son still mining helium? If yes, does he still feel it's a good, oops, lengthy play? He still is, but he tells me that it's not very profitable right now. It kind of sucks. So that's it. But he's in LA and everybody's mining helium. So it's the, like the worst place to do it. <laughs> sell in June, go away. Uh, I wish I would have said sell in April, go away. That would have been perfect. But there's a, a video we did just... Digital asset news, sell in May, go away. We did that in April, I think. 
April or March. And it was just a study that took a look at, you know, years and years of that old adage from Wall Street, sell a man, go away. And they found that, you know, over the last 50 to 75 years, it's pretty darn accurate. So I see a lot of pain in the summer and then maybe a little rebound towards the end of the year. But 2022, let's be honest, is not going to be like uh, a bull run in any way, shape or form. Junk Montreal, Fred Take, thanks. All right. Uh, Chewy says, Kevin O'Leary doesn't care nothing about the industry as long as his money is going up. Well, he is an entrepreneur, and that's pretty much it. Money talks, and that's how. Let's see. And Akko, I think I answered this. So there we go. George and Rob are the best. Thanks. George does a lot more live streams than I do. He also has a car channel. You should check that out. Sus. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Edward says, uh, Sweatcoin is helping me and my wife to walk more. Great. That's the whole point. Found out my son, found out my son on since 2020 and literally impossible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. And I will tell you, like, there are a lot of times when I look at my phone, I look at the steps, and I'm like, damn, I'm only at 7,000. I need 3,000 more steps. And it forces you to kind of get in there. It's just a, it's a gamification. And if that, you know, helps you live longer, not so much, not so much the worse. I'll take it. 46.8, 47.5, 44.6, Bitcoin domination. And of course, it's different everywhere. You guys are correct. Uh, yeah, so this is something. Jay Young Chow says, do you ever look how in real estate people are over leveraged with private loans and that can lead to another black eye for crypto? I feel July will be it. Be it's historically, it's the worst month. I, you have to understand that everything's connected. So when the stock market goes down, people have to pay their leverage positions because they're a bunch of degenerates over there. Not like in crypto. So what do they got to do? Well, there's only one place that's open 24-7, 365, uh, besides Forex, I know, uh, is crypto. So they're going to sell a bunch of crypto and, and uh, take care of those positions. Now, if, uh, if we have an issue with real estate falling apart and then people going, wow, you know, I can't, or God forbid they took, you know, a second mortgage against their house to pay for things, and they can't pay for that. And they, they look at all the crypto going down and stocks going down. So what are they going to do? Liquid. They're going to liquidate so they can cover those and not lose their houses. Kind of what happened in 2008. So I see it happening again. And it's okay. If you, if you set yourself up for it, you're waiting. For, you want this to happen. You need it to happen. You'd like it to happen. It's going to suck for some people, but the ones that have been there, Bob Hayes, how's your theta? I haven't checked on the theta pineapple for quite some time. I know I still have it. It's in one of my wallets. I just don't know which one. I have a, a spreadsheet of all the stuff that I have. Yeah. I make Matic daily. Awesome. Maybe you staking? Yeah. Robert Goss says it's uh, yeah, young. I think that's a good point. Real estate trouble does spill over to other assets. It yeah, did in 08. Everyone took a big hit. People overextended. You know who really took a big hit? So me and the wife did a bunch of we have a bunch of properties for Airbnb and Verbo. And uh, there's two people that we listened to on on YouTube when we first got into it. And one had the idea of you should never go to somebody and rent their place and then sub lease it or sub rent it out on Airbnb. Never do that. You must own properties. And the second guy was like, no, what you need to do is just look for everything that's, that's available. And uh, that's for rent. You go to that owner and say, look, I want to rent your place, but I'm going to put it on Airbnb. I'll pay you your mortgage, your, your rent every month, but I'm going to try to make more uh, as like an arbitrage and uh, go for Airbnb and Verbo customers. And it worked out great. This guy had like, I want to say over 500 different properties. And that was awesome until uh, March 2020, when everybody stopped traveling because of the COVID virus. And then all of a sudden, the money that he had kind of dried up 
and he had to pay the mortgages on 500 plus properties, but no one was coming into his, his locations. And it lasted for a full year. I think he lost a bunch of properties and it's just one of those things where it's like Warren Buffett says, when, when the tide comes out, uh, you see who's swimming naked. And those are very, very dangerous plays. And we just went for the fact of, we thought, well, it's just better to own assets than to rent and not really have anything, anything. And that's what we did. And it works out great. I mean, for us, it might not be for you. Not financial advice. <laughs> yes, Mirko says it. Uh, this Friday will be very important to stocks and crypto, CPI numbers, and uh, next week I have that Fed Reserve. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of development on Cardano. Yes, also Cornucopia's game seems to be doing pretty great. Missed the boat on that one. <laughs> I just did. So, Matt, what's up, bro? Things are going to be moving on Sweatcoin. See, that's why I like Sweatcoin, because it's free, and it forces you to move. Then you, then you get to uh, compete against me. And if you beat me in the monthly steps, because you can follow anybody you want to on the, on the app. If you beat me, you can come on the show, or I'll do a live portfolio review, or I'll pay you 50 sweat coins. That's the top three, not everybody. Uh, Robbie thinks Celsius will continue to grow as a company. Are they on their last leg? I would not put anything in past Alex Wyshynski. There's different uh, FUD and different issues going around with Celsius, but I will tell you, I just got paid today. I don't have a lot of crypto on Celsius because that's just not, I don't think that's smart to leave a bunch of crypto in any one place, even on Voyager or Kraken or whatever exchange you want to say, or even on my... Uh, uh, MetaMask wallet. Usually it's one of these things, a ledger. So that's because I, I feel just safer with that. So don't put anything more than what you're willing to, to part with and lose. That's dumb. I can't say that. Opinion on Cosmos. I was dollar cost averaging Cosmos for quite some time. I think it's not only, well, first of all, you have to remember Luna was built on Cosmos. Don't give it a black eye just because of that. But also uh, Crypto.com or Crowcoin was built on Cosmos. And a lot of different chains are going to be built on Cosmos. It's a multi-operational, multi-function chain. And uh, I see it doing very good things. It's just that now in the bear market, now they can grow into all the great stuff that they want to do. I'd like to do a deep dive on them, but I haven't, don't have time. Uh, juggernaut. Why did Voyager pump? Did it pump today or yesterday? Remember the Voyager loyalty program 2.0 came out. So instead of having three tiers, now you have six tiers and it's accessible to everybody. And I want you to think about this for a second. What exchange do you guys use out there for, to trade and buy crypto? Just put it in the comments. I'm just curious because think about all the exchanges that you use and some do this and some don't, but do they give you cash back? Do they give you a debit card? Uh, do they pay in kind for the crypto that you keep on there? Have they never been hacked? Uh, do they have competitive fees? And that's what Voyager is. And that's why I use them all the time. So there's a reason why I pumped because that loyalty program just came out. Also, I heard rumblings that, and I, and I had Steve Ehrlich, the CEO on a month ago, and he said it was going to come out in a month and be damned if he didn't hit it. And he also said, two more things that they're going to launch in Europe before the end of 2022. And also they're going to be able to trade equities or stocks on Voyager uh, before the end of 2022. So just saying. Mm. Let me go all the way down. I think these are questions I already answered. Ah, here we go. Binance, Bybit, Aave, Vault, and Celsius. Well, Aave, yeah. <sighs> Celsius has a great swap function, though. I will say that. I wish Voyager had that. It's pretty cool. Bybit, I can't use Bybit. I'm an American. Binance, I can't use Binance. I can't even use Binance US because I'm in Texas. Great question. Jeff says, Rob, how's your portfolio holding up? Not the greatest. However... Let me show you something. Two 
two things actually. So my portfolio is not the greatest, but what has buoyed me or kept me afloat, I have this second channel called Dan, it's called Dan Degen. And I named it that specifically for two reasons. One is because I put it to a vote on Twitter and that's what people unanimously agreed. And the second reason I left it that is to, to let people know that these are super, super, super risky plays. And there was three that we've done so far that what I'm trying to do is get to those products that haven't even launched yet, but they're super risky. But the thesis is sound. The thesis is I only talk about those projects that have a huge community already built in. What am I talking about? Well, with Genso Kishi, they were already a game. Genso Kishi, G-E-N-S-O-K-I-S-H-I. This is the DGen spreadsheet. And there's a link in the description. You can find it right now. And this is the deep dive videos I did. And here's the, the percentages gained. So when I looked at Genso Kishi, they already had a, a game that was on PS4, Nintendo Switch, iOS and Android, and they were, they were porting over to play to earn. Like, well, this is a no brainer because I already have millions of people built in. That one, the purchase price was 0 0.015, about a penny and a half. It went up to 0 0.75, that's different. I think we're looking at 48 cents today. So it's still a 32X, that's doing pretty good. Everdome, uh, they had some metaverse play, but they're also backed by MetaHero and they have a pretty huge community as well. And they're all working together with 10 sets. So I go, well, that would make sense. Purchase price was uh, uh, half a penny and now it's two cents. So I get a four X, but these are all like bear market prices. And the last one was Fame MMA, which that one was, it was UFC. Fame MMA is a, not UFC, it's a mixed martial arts uh, organization in parts of Poland and different parts of Europe, and they only have influencers fight, which is crazy in my opinion. But uh, influencers get paid in their fame token. Uh, they're doing NFTs, they're doing play to earn games, they're doing all this great stuff. You can help with your discounts on pay-per-view. They're using, so like that was, that's like millions of people. That was a no brainer too. And that one did really good. Now they've all come down, but I will tell you this, <laughs> I am not, 32x up on my Bitcoin or 4x up on my Ethereum or 7x up or 5x up on my Cardano uh, from, I mean, as it's gone down, the recent ones. So yeah, um, that's how it's been. Those are the ones that have booed me. Again, if you check out Digital S Dan Degen, just know that they're super duper risky and you probably lose everything. That's all. Uh, Adrian, what's your thoughts on Matic for this bear market? I like Matic. We're going to do a video about Matic. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show everybody how to, how to use the bridge of Matic to go from uh, Ethereum to Matic and back and forth so you don't lose all your crypto. Also how to purchase different things on uh, DEXs. And we're doing it to highlight um, Avagachi. It's a game that uh, I feel, honestly, is kind of nerdy, but that's not my job as an investor. It's, uh, again, big community. I always, there's always four things. How big is the community and how thriving is it? What's the utility? What does it do that's different? And is it just a me too product? What's the team? Where have they been before? So I can know where they're going. And what's the tokenomics? Am I gonna get dumped on? That's it, very simple. Uh, so for Matic, for this bear market, you know what it really comes down to? just how good and how well effectively that merge happens. I don't see good things for the merge because it's just that second part of the three-part process for, it's not even called ETH 2.0. I always get it confused. ETH, I forgot. But uh, sharding is the next unlock. So if people think, oh, it's going to be faster or it's going to be uh, less gas fees, which is the big thing. It's not what it's going to do. That's it. Rob is holding VeChain worth it. I don't hold it, but that doesn't mean anything. I miss out on a ton of stuff. Can't really tell you. I used to own VeChain, just don't anymore. So Dolphin Daddy, we think about the 800 day EMA on the daily. Everything we touch it, pricing to slow down market. I was watching Ben's channel just a little bit ago on the on the 200 EMA, and he was talking about uh, the bull ban, uh, the bull support ban. 
and how it becomes, it's the support for the bull run, but it's resistance uh, after that. I got to take a look at it. I don't really, the thing is, if you take a look at the, at the, at the narrative, what is going to drive, because what does TA show you? TA show you, it shows you the collective consciousness of, of what people are actually going to buy into. Are they going to buy? Are they going to sell? Uh, pretty much, you know, where are they going? And you can draw patterns and you can look at candles and, and all that stuff. And it's great. But to me, I just think to myself in the macro environment, what's going to push a bunch of people uh, to buy or to get into crypto? Cause it's a risk on asset. Is the economy doing fantastic? Is, are these rates going to be stabilized? Are these supply chains going to be uh, smoothed out? Is, is the stock market going to be that stable moving forward because of the economy? I just don't think it's, it, it's there. I, I just don't see it. I think the narrative has to change. And, the only th and there's, two th there's, there's three big things actually has to change. One, the war in uh, Ukraine has to have some kind of resolution. Two, is we have to see if the Fed's actually going to continue on with this or increase or decrease or pivot. And then the, three, the third thing is the supply chain issue. And if we can't uh, get those under control, then it doesn't really matter. And I'm not really concerned about next day, five days, and I'm more like one, three, and five years. Whew. Let's see. <laughs> Martin Lawrence is coming to us. I heard that. Sounds good. World Mobile Token is coming to America. I'm in talks to bring them on the show. Sounds pretty good. Thanks, Jag. I try. Is VJX worth it? Depends. Depends on what you want to do, right? If you're... If you're trading a lot on Voyager, it's probably worth it. If it's like not your main thing, I mean, probably not. But to me, I always think to myself, and the and the referrals are pretty good. Like it's like 50 bucks, depending on which which tier you're at. It's like 50, 65, 75, 100, and like $125 per referral. So, and that just depends on the, on the tier you're at. Again, if you use Voyager like I do, also, um, Voyager just upgraded their, their limit orders. Like I put in a limit order for 20,000 for Bitcoin. Like when it hit 20,000 to buy a full Bitcoin, I put that in and, uh, and it's, it's stuck because before the limit orders were very tight. You can only do like a thousand up or a thousand down or sell or buy. So like if, if Bitcoin's at 30,000 today, I can only say buy it at 29,000 and we only execute that, which kind of sucks, especially when it wicks down to 25 K. So now it's, it at least goes to at least 10,000 10, below. So I like that part. You know what, everybody's, I think I've answered this three times. I'm going to say, I'm not, no, it's not. I'm not going to hold it, but you can hold it. I know they're big with China, but I don't trust China. <laughs> I just don't. Joby, do you think some amazing buying opportunities are coming? Yes, in the market, in the, in the real estate market. Yes, there are. I don't know how soon it is though, but I can tell you from, from the uh, real estate agents that in this area, um, there's a little bit more supply than there used to be. I was just walking my dog this morning. I saw two houses for sale that have been for sale for like uh, over two weeks. So to me, I thought it was interesting. Oh, thanks, man. Super sticker. This is a great question. Lotus Ferry. How come Voyager is paying rewards on crypto while Celsius and BlockFi can't do the SEC? So I had Steve on, CEO of Steve Ehrlich, CEO of Voyager, and I had Alex Mashinsky, the CEO of Celsius on at different times, obviously. And I asked Steve, I said, why are you able to, to give yield and he's uh, as a, you know, like BlockFi and Celsius are, are, are stopping that um, for uh, Americans. Celsius hasn't stopped it, stopped it. Um, but they've, they've reduced it. And then, of course, the credit investors and things like that. 
that was a big thing, accredited investors, excuse me. In America, you have to be an accredited investor. Either you make so many millions of dollars per uh, in a business, or you make over $200,000 per year or some combination of the two. If you're not an accredited investor, uh, you will, past April 15th, you will not be able to accrue uh, any interest on your crypto unless you had put crypto into your account April 15th or April before April 15th of this year. So everything that you put in your account on April 15th before in the United States, you are gaining yield. After April 15th, if you are not an accredited investor, uh, you will still gain that yield in the stuff before, but you can't add any more in. It's very, I hope that made sense. So the question then in Celsius and BlockFi, so why, what's going on, especially with, with BlockFi? And I asked Steve that and he goes, you know, he goes, I don't know what they're doing, but all of them do loans. He said, there's something, there's, there's an issue with, with, with the loans, uh, with how they're doing it or how the, the, the verbiage, not that that's the, the thing with Celsius. He's just saying, he just said a blanket statement. I'm not going to say this is the exact reason. And also remember that, that uh, Voyager is a brokerage. It's not an exchange. So all they do is they're, they're like the hotels.com of crypto. So like you want Bitcoin at $29,876? Okay, let's look at all these exchanges. This is the best price. There you go. We saved you some money. We're going to take a little bit of money. And that's what brokers do. And of course, they don't do loans, which I'm glad they don't because I think that's a, that's a reason. That's a, something is with that. I'm not for sure. So there's your answer from what I could get from both of them. Great. I try to... Marky Searcy, the OG of crypto was here. Man, nothing but a bunch of... of uh, Celebrities. Are you still holding ADA? Oh, yeah. Well, I have to. I got to hold ADA in my stake pools. I got two of them. Speaking of which, I haven't talked about that in a while. If you're looking to stake your ADA, you don't like put it on exchange, help to secure the network, stake it with uh, DNews. There's a link in the description. I do a video. I explain exactly what does mean proof of work, proof of stake, how much you're actually going to yield, how it actually works, and everything in between. There's a video, and I show you exactly how to, how to stake it. That's it. Yeah. Ricochet Rabbit says, I dropped my ETH holdings 80% over the course of two months. And I'm grateful no matter what happens. Never know. Like I said, Ethereum could go to $10,000 tomorrow. Who knows? Do you think beta is a better buy than soul? I will tell you this. The community is much better. Have you ever been in the ADA community? Oh, they love ADA. Talk about it all the time. And uh, the longer I'm in the space, the more I appreciate the tortoise and the hare analogy. That's all I'll say. Soul, I mean, looks like it could do some great things, but I mean, it just shut down for four hours and they told all the uh, validators, hey, restart, unplug your modem and plug it back in or whatever they do to restart the, <laughs> to restart the network. Just kidding. You know what I mean? Uh, Yeah, uh, I think that's it. Oh man, we went way over. So look, let me make sure I didn't, I didn't miss anything. I'm sure I did, so many. Eduardo, thoughts on the crypto regulation bill that will happen tomorrow with uh, Lummis and Sailor? See what exactly what it says? Not for sure. But again, I think it's a step in the right direction. We can't get people to come in here without regulation and a little guidance. That's just what it is. I know people think we don't need it, but we do. And before you say, what has regulation ever done as far as like the positivity? Government can't do squat. Did okay with OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Act. A lot of people not to breathe in a bunch of asbestos and die of lung cancer and stuff like that. I'm just saying, not like the corporations were gonna save us, let's be honest. And you know, Act 230 allowed uh, the internet to flourish because the people who own the uh, websites didn't want to get sued for slander or libel for people that actually wrote different things on their websites as far as blog posts and things like that and be responsible. So it's not like it's all bad. It works out okay. Anyhow, that's it. So look, thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate the time. And always fun times, right? Uh, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and that's it for today. So thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one. Adiós.